you know better than the next person. Right. Uh, and, and make sure that you are conscious of that each and every day. Brett Favre, Mississippi's favorite son, is back in the news. Typical white conservative male <laughs> that's stuck in his own little world that don't give a damn about anything that doesn't let impact him. With Shannon Sharp breaking his silence against his fellow Hall of Famer. Now Favre is currently embroiled in a controversy involving the use of federal welfare funds set aside for the state of Mississippi's most vulnerable residents, which were reportedly diverted to Favre and others. There is some good that comes out of bad if, if you're a good, faithful person. Brett Favre asked the head of a nonprofit handling welfare funds, quote, if you were to pay me, is there any way that the media could find out where it came from and how much? Favre embroiled in the Mississippi welfare scandal. You would think Brett Favre, born and raised in Kill, Mississippi, if any place in America have any more racist history than Mississippi? Mm -mm. But Brett Favre is unaware. Sued Shannon Sharp through a former Trump lawyer for defamation. Sharp is taking none of it. State investigators allege that a group of some of Mississippi's most influential people spent more than $77 million that should have gone to poor families on pet projects like this volleyball arena at the university where the Hall of Famer played college football and where his daughter played volleyball. With serious allegations against Favre. There's been sort of a trickle of information, but we're learning more and more here recently through text messages both that I obtained and that have been entered into a court filing um, that show kind of how far was discussing these deals with with welfare officials. So, you know, he was he was aware that this money was coming from the Department of Human Services. He was working with John Davis on uh, pulling down this money. And the story being broken by Mississippi Today's Anna Wolf. Can you tell dumb dumb politics has always been in sport? Sharp is simply having none of it. Recall him being looped into a suit along with former NFL player turned broadcaster Pat McAfee and Mississippi State Auditor Shad White. All three have gone on the offensive. The lawyers for Shannon argue the following. His opinions, commentary based on reported facts and couched in rhetorical hyperbole regarding an issue of public concern about a public figure, lie at the core of the protections afforded by the First Amendment and Mississippi law. Sharp's lawyers wrote in a memo of support of their client's motion to dismiss. Sharp's comments are not actionable, and the complaint is irreparably defective on its face. Andrew Buckholtz would write, of course, in the United States, a media defendant in a defamation case does not need to prove their writing or commentary was completely factual, accurate, when it's about a public figure. The standard established in 1964, the Supreme Court case NYT v. Sullivan and further codified in subsequent decisions requires public figure plaintiffs to prove not just the statements were A, false, and B, defamatory, the levels required for non-public figures, but also that they were made with actual malice. Knowledge the statement was false or reckless disregard for the truth of the statement. What sparked the suit? Favre's lawyers saw this comment from Sharp on FS1. So if that is the poorest state, Brett Favre is taking from the underserved. You made a hundred plus million dollars in the NFL. And to talk about, well, Favre didn't know, this is what Brett Favre texted. If you were to pay me, is there any way the media can find out where it came from and how much? He stole money from people that really needed that money. While claims like stolen money are what Favre takes particular issue with and certainly can be disputed, Sharp's team is right that his comments here were not out of the blue but were based on an interpretation of reported facts. The judge in the case denied Favre's latest motion to be dismissed in the case as a defendant. Favre has denied any wrongdoing. That's via AJ Perez at Front Office Sports, who does great work. Via Buckholtz once more, it's interesting to see Sharp's team using rhetorical hyperbole as a defense. And if this does get to trial, it might be quite interesting to hear just how he approaches hyperbole in regards to what he says on Undisputed. And that may have some notable dimensions in the wider context of sports debate and opinion shows. In the meantime, Favre has broken his silence to retweet Megyn Kelly and voice his support for exiled Fox News host and promoter of white supremacy talking points, Tucker Carlson. Go figure.